Herbal supplements are a $15 billion a year business. In 2012, there were 55,000 different supplement products out there on the market. And while the federal government evaluates prescription drugs and medications, supplements are kind of in a league of their own. They don't require FDA approval before going on sale. As long as they market the product without making any claims, it can treat or cure a medical condition. And that has sparked calls for reform from some lawmakers and medical experts. For example, last February, the New York State Attorney General ordered retailers like Walmart, Target, and Walgreens to stop selling herbal supplements until they could clarify the ingredients inside. And then in November, the Justice Department announced more than 100 criminal and civil cases against the makers and marketers of supplements that contain ingredients that were not listed or made unsupported claims about the products. So whether it be for general wellness, immunity boost, weight loss, what do you need to know before you buy a supplement? Right now I'm joined by Jim Morelli, a pharmacist, author, and consultant for U.S. Pharmacopoeia Convention. He's here on behalf of the convention, which is a nonprofit that sets standards for medicines as well as food ingredients and dietary supplements. I guess first question is just uh, what's the danger for you? What, what, do you, what is your first priority here? First priority is to make sure that whatever is on the label is actually in the bottle, not just the ingredient, but the dose. So that I'm, is very important. I'm looking right there and it says in big letters, you know, iron. You know, iron. And that's kind of where I yeah. stop. Right. But I should not stop there. You should look at the dose as well, 65 milligrams. But here's the problem. The problem is, is that we have had some supplements on the market where it might say iron 65 milligram, not okay. this particular one. Right. And that's not what's in the bottle. And that's what the big problem has been. This is particularly true if you've got something that's promising weight loss, muscle gain, increased libido. As a consumer, you've got to have your yellow lights on and be very, very cautious as you proceed because some of these products have been found to have things that weren't supposed to be in there and were not listed on the label and even ingredients that in this country are simply not allowed. One other thing on this label, it has a mark called the USP Verified Mark. You mentioned yet as United States Pharmacopeia. Right. This is a program they started to verify supplements and vitamins. There's various ones here, but um, basically what they're trying to do is set standards for the uh, supplement and multivitamin industry, the vitamin industry, right. excuse me, as they do with prescription drugs. If you want to bring a prescription or non-prescription drug onto the market, it has to meet the standards set by USP. That's from an act of Congress. So this is voluntary, though. So you talk about Congress. You know, I looked up uh, that 1994. It's called the uh, Dietary Supplements Health and Education of Act of 94, which exempts drugs from regulation if they are called supplements. Right. So there's all this back and forth about it, but in the end, do you think it's up to lawmakers to change that law? Well, let's To put make it this us way. safe at home? You know, we, we're, we went down, we started down the slippery slope in 94 when they decided to basically take the FDA out of the equation when it came to multi, uh, vi I keep saying multi That's vitamins right. and supplements. Right. And uh, by taking the FDA out, they categorize these as foods. They are regulated as foods until something happens. And then if something happens, the FDA can ste step in with enforcement action. There are many calls now for there to be stricter regulations, even from the supplement industry itself. So, Jim, I saw this. That was a 1994 law. In 94, there were 4,000 products out there that considered themselves to be supplements. In 2012, this is according to a Forbes article I was reading today, 55,000. Astounding. Yeah, I mean, so, as a so people are really trying to make, or they are making money off of what sometimes we don't know what it is. Right, time. exactly. And that is a big problem. You want to make sure you've got quality, purity, potency. You want to make sure there are not contaminants in there. Um, so one way to do that is if you look for USP verified on there, you know at least that, that is standards were set for that and these manufacturers were following the standards. These are not the only ones, by the way. It's just a representation. Um, but there are lots out there that don't, that don't have that and don't follow certain standards. and that's where you can get into trouble. Read the labels, be safe, look for the USB right there. And you know what, talk with your doctor and pharmacist about whether you need That's to take supplements, right. you know, because sometimes you don't. Because sometimes my friends will tell me I do. That's or right, my wife or the will internet tell me, take the supplement, you. or the internet, <laughs> right. Dr. Google, right? Okay, Jim uh, Morelli, thanks for taking the time, we appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, Kiba, Mark?